Yep. You guessed it. It's time for your rotten theology lesson. We've got a God that's so holy. He will not let me have what I want. But he let King David, a man after his own heart, who was not even regenerated, born again, have a sex buffet of how many hundreds of wives and concubines. Never the same entree, sex entree the same night every year. Against his command in Deuteronomy 17, 17 that said the king was not to multiply to himself neither wives nor horses. And then this cat goes and stealthily has the wife of Bathsheba, whom he lusted after, killed. And then goes and and all that happens to David he is he loses his child who he will see again one day but after having committed such an atrocious sin that God said because by this sin thou hast given occasion of the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme now see it was a grievous sin against God but what did God do? how did God punish King David? this holy God he killed the child, his child. David experienced a few seasons of grief. But he got to marry Bathsheba. And he got to fuck that pussy, hot pussy, again. And again. Real brilliant. How to get, how to get the love, what you want. When you lust for it in your heart and God says no, how to get it? Just break God's law some other way. In such a way, and maybe you end up getting it. Look, David had a sword in his house because of this big fucking deal. I, I would, I would take anything just so long as I could have my good looks, long arms, be a rapper, be famous, and have my health, and have my life. I would take any rigmarole to get that. God was holy, why didn't he forbid King David from having Bathsheba, the wife? God's love for sinners. God only loves the born again Christians because he sees himself, Jesus, in them. You love others because you see yourselves in them. But that, and since there are not you, that they become an extension of yourself so you in effect become bigger than you already are same thing with God and loving his son the infinite becomes infinitely bigger and loving those who are made in the image of his son and who by Jesus' death and resurrection God doesn't see you God doesn't love you God only loves the Jesus he sees in you but he loves you, and in doing so, he becomes uh, you become an extension of him when he loves you. Hey, Chris, can I have a coffee? So much for the God who loves me. Now, granted, God does love, love the unelect, those who will not get saved. But the ground, but that song, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Well, that that damn ground, sure as hell, ain't level at the foot of the whatever it is of God's love for those who will never get saved. How does God? How does God decide? To put somebody before they've done any wrong whatsoever, have them born in deepest darkest Africa and live a life as a slave whipped, beaten any children she has get taken away from her and sold on the black market and she goes to hell because she never hears uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ how can you say God loved her love is action 
when in America you got a Wiccan got John Gotti full full of riches living it up the Teflon Don no let's the big tuna he was a mafia Don the feds couldn't nail him Congress congressional hearings couldn't nail him he died a peaceful old age an old man a natural death peaceful free as a bird are you saying God loved this motherfucker more than he loved that slave in Africa? They're both going to hell. Oh, it's go oh, everything's going to eat well out in hell. No, it's not because if you go to hell, eat hey, part, you're going to burn. So where the fuck is justice in that? <laughs> Ain't it funny? They say God loves us not because of who we are, but because who He is. And yet, in another breath, they'll say, the only reason God loves us is because we are we, of who we are, made in the image of the sun. Making me, make me fucking mind. Oh, and here's another problem. Election. God doesn't force anybody to get saved or not to get saved. Some people who press is past their breaking point. Do they say, yes, I'll get saved, or until they commit the unbordable sin and refusing the urgence of the Holy Ghost. But then our people, like this woman with a heart attack, goes to a Billy Graham crusade. She had a heart attack five years ago, so she's weak. She wants to go up to the altar, but nobody wants to take her because those who came with her believe it's all bullshit. So she starts walking up. Billy Graham does not say you can get saved. And you see, he says you gotta come up and do a work of righteousness of confessing Christ first and then you get saved. I thought you got saved first and then did the works of righteousness. She walks up forward because she wants to get saved badly. But God and the way he created the creation created it such that this woman that he couldn't hold, make it in certain, this woman dies of a heart attack before she makes it down and she goes to hell because she didn't get saved. Gee God, is that what a what a foul way of choosing not to let somebody be saved. What a hideous, dark, foreboding way. What a sadistic way to choose not to choose somebody to enter into your kingdom. When they wanted to get, get saved, well, it says, "Is it? It is not. As, uh, it is not of him that willeth, or of him that runneth, or walks, or walks down the altar, but of God that chooses." God, I hate you. And God, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. With whom nothing is impossible. You realize how bad this looks on you, God? How this betrays the dark side and the light and whom is no darkness? I mean, otherwise, how hideous of an evil monster are you? They would purposefully, purposefully create a creation to have beans in it you can torment so you can show off just how big and bad a bully you could be to all those who choose to be on your side and serve you so they so that they can tremble when they see oh I'm glad I'm not God I'm glad God is not my not my enemy I can think of a better way and for this I hate you I wanna love you but God I hate you I wish it had been God the Father on that cross. Chris, but what about where it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. <coughs> Wait a minute. There are, in another place in the scripture, you got to take the whole counsel of God. It says, God loves us only for Jesus' sake. In other words, John 3.16 should read, really read, 
For God so loved the world, for Jesus' sake, that He gave His only begotten Son. That makes sense because when Jesus died, what did he, what did he, what did he really sacrifice? He didn't sacrifice nothing. Look at what it, what it gets him. His eagle stroke for all eternity. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive riches and honor and glory. So it's all about God and Jesus. None of it is about us. Therefore, I want my life down here now. I want to be glorified down here now and get absolutely nothing in heaven. Because it's a, it's a cash game. It's a selfish game. It's he who gets the most toys wins. And that's going to be God. But down here, he who dies with the most toys wins. Up there, he who has the most toys forever and ever wins. And that's good. Oh, e Jesus. Jesus loves us, but God the Father doesn't. Therefore, I wish that it had been, it had been God the Father on that cross. Not for three hours, but for seven days. And I wish I could be one of those Roman soldiers with those whips with mud, bone and metal fragments in them, whipping them. From behind his head, so I could rip out his eyes, and from behind his crotch, so I could rip off his testicles and give him some real pain. Pain that Jesus never experienced. I laugh at the sacrifice of Jesus. You call that pain? Jesus' martyrs have experienced, some of Jesus' martyrs experienced ten times more pain than Jesus ever dared to on, his, on the cross. Oh, God loves the sinner more. Ten, more tenderly than the mother loves her newborn son. Some love God couldn't hold out, let her ticker hold out just long enough for her to get saved. Some love. Oh, but God's so intended to love what He can to people, people who are to Him were ten thousand times disgusting to Him than a pile of vomit would be to you when you were eating. Yeah, it's all about ideology, about what God is. Because God is this. You never think that it's not God. God. Why did he have to hate it? No wonder Christians act conceited. God loves me in a way that he can never love you because I'm a Christian. Therefore, when we Christians coming from England want to take up, want to live in this new world, we have the right to kill the Indians because they believe in false gods. They're not Christians, so we have a right to take it from them because we're God's special children. The brothers in Africa worship idols, worship nature. They're in darkness. We have a right to make them our slaves. We're doing them a favor. Tell them about Christianity. <laughs> they should thank us for making them our, our slaves. This is a recipe for pompousness, conceitedness. Where's the compassion for the people? Oh, God loves me. But, Christian, don't get so conceited. God only loves you because for Jesus Christ. Christ's sake, because he sees Jesus in you. The split second Jesus left you, he'd hate you just like he hates, hates those Indians and those Africans. When God sent Israel to drive out the Canaanites, he said, I do not drive them out because of your righteousness, but for their wickedness. Well, the tables are turned. God let America, the, uh, the colonists, drive out the Indians because the colonists were righteous Christians. And because, of course, because the Indians were dark in darkness. This is the way I see it. God is love. Shouldn't that mean everything that is alive since a living sentient being should be Considered in the image of God and therefore loved. Not because who they are, but because who God is. Well, 
I don't know. I guess it's impossible for God to love, truly love some soul at 100% based on who He is. Because He creates fire, but does He love the fire? He's love. He should love the fire. But it doesn't. But I guess God lets the woman walking up to the altar have a heart attack and die because he doesn't control creation directly. Once Adam took control by his sins, but he leaves this universe to run on the law of the jungle and the law of averages and chance. Oh, oh yes, just as long as the number of people who die while walking up to get saved is not too high, God doesn't care. God will do, bring men through, through miraculous circumstances to get them saved. And this, this same damn God cannot get this woman's heart to hold out long enough for her to get saved. Now do you purposely want to have people you damn do you perp do you doubt who is not willing that any should perish? You realize how bad this looks on you, you son of a bitch.